ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय कांतो टू चैप्टर टू द लॉर्ड इन द हार्ट टेक्स्ट वन श्री सुखा उवाचा एवं पूरा धरण्यात्मा योनिर नाश्तम स्मृति प्रत्याहवाद्यता सजिदम अमोघदृष्टि यथा पयात प्रग व्यवाशा बुद्धि हरे कृष्ण ट्रांसलेशन श्री सुखदेव गोस्वामी सेट sorry shri sukde goswami said formerly prior to the manifestation of the cosmos lord brahma by meditating on the virat rupa regained his lost consciousness by appeasing the lord thus he was able to rebuild the creation as it was before text 2 saptasya hi brahmana hi sapanta yan nama bir dhyayati tir aparthaya ंगजिबिले वर्ल्ड he should be intelligently fixed and never endeavor for unwanted things being competent to perceive practically that all such endeavors are merely hard labor for nothing text 4 satyam shitao kim kashipo prayasar bahau swaside hi upapar ha na he ki him sati anjalau kim parudana patriya When there are ample earthly flats to lie on, what is the necessity of cots and beds? When one can use his own arms, what is the necessity of a pillow? When one can use the palms of his hand, what is the necessity of varieties of utensils? When there is simple covering or skins of trees, what is the necessity of clothing? Text five. चिराने किं पाथि न शांति दिशांति भिक्षम नेवां गृप्यह पराभृता सरितोपि अशुष्यन रुदा गुहा के मजितो वति नपोसनान काश्मत पचांति कवायो दाना दुर्मददन आर दे नो टोन क्लोज लाइंग ऑन द कॉमन रोड do the trees which exist for maintaining others no longer give alms to charity do the rivers being dried up no longer supply water to the thirsty are the caves of the mountains now closed or above all does the almighty lord not protect the fully surrendered souls why then do the learned sages go to flatter those who are intoxicated by hard earned wealth text 6 evam swa chitte swata swasita आत्मा प्रियो अर्थो भगवान अनंत तम निवृत्तो न्यातार्थो भजेता संसारा हेतु परमश्चा यत्र दिस बीइंग फिक्स्ड वन मस्ट रेंडर सर्विस ऑन टू द सुपर सोल सिचुएटेड इन वन्स ओन हार्ट बाय हिज ओमनिपोटेंसी बिकॉज़ ही इज द अलमाइटी पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉडहेड इटर्नल एंड अनलिमिटेड ही इज द अल्टीमेट गोल ऑफ लाइफ एंड बाय वर्शिपिंग हिम one can end the cause of the conditioned state of existence text 
kastam twa anadriya paranu chintam rute pashuna satim nama kuryat pashyanjanam patinam vaitaryanam swakarmajan paritapanjushanam who else but the gross materialist will neglect such transcendental thought and take to the non-permanent names only, seeing the mass of people fallen in the river of suffering as a consequence of accruing the result of their own work? Next date. Kesit swadehantu ridaya vakshaye Pradesha matram purusham vasantam Chatur Pujam Kanja Rathanga Sankha Gadadaram Dharanya Smaranti Others conceive of the personality of Godhead residing within the body in the region of the heart and measuring only eight inches with four hands carrying a lotus, a wheel, wheel of a chariot, a conch shell and a club respectively. Text 9. Prashana Vaktram Nalina Yakshanam Gadamba Kinjalka Pisanga Vasasam Lashan Maharatna Hiran Mayan Gadam Spuran Maharatna Kirita Kundalam His mouth expresses his happiness, his eyes spread like the petals of a lotus, and his garments yellowish like the saffron of a kadamba flower are bedecked with valuable jewels. His ornaments are all made of gold, set with jewels, and he wears a glowing head, headdress and earrings. Text 10. Unitra rit pankajaka nikalaye yogeshwara sthapita pada palavam shilakshanam kastuba ratna kandaram Amlana Lakshmiya Vana Maya Lachitam. His lotus feet are placed over the walls of lotus like hearts of great mystics. On his chest is the Kwasto jewel engraved with a beautiful calf, and there are other jewels on his shoulders. His complete torso is garlanded with fresh flowers. Text 11. Vipusitam mekala yangulya ker Mahadane nupura kankana piti pi Snekta malakan chunchita nila kuntaler Viro chamana na hasape salam. He is well decorated with an ornamental reed about his waist and rings studded with valuable jewels on his fingers. His leglets, his bangles, his oiled hair curling with a bluish tint and his beautiful smiling face are all very pleasing. Text 12. Adina lila hasite shano lashad Brubhanga samsuchita buri anugraham Ikshita chintamayam emam ishwaram the Lord's magnanimous pastimes and the glowing glancing of his smiling face are all indications of his extensive benedictions. One must therefore concentrate on this transcendental form of the Lord as long as the mind can be fixed on him by meditation. Text 13. Ekaika shogani dhyanu pavayat Padadi yava tashitam gada brutaha Chitam chitam stanam apoya darayet Param param sutiati diryata yata. The process of meditation should begin from the lotus feet of the Lord and progress to his smiling face. The meditation should be concentrated upon the lotus feet, then the calves, then the thighs, and in this way higher and higher. The more the mind becomes fixed upon the different parts of the limbs, one, one after another, the more the intelligence becomes purified. Exporting. Yavanya jayate paravarsmen 
विश्वेश्वरे त्रस्तारी भक्ति योगा तावत स्थाविया पुरुषाया रूपम क्रिया वसाने प्रयाता स्मारता Unless the gross materialist develops a sense of loving service unto the Supreme Lord, the seer of both the transcendental and material worlds, he should remember or meditate upon the universal form of the Lord at the end of his prescribed duties. Text fifteen. Stiram sukham chashana masito yatir yada jiha suri mam angalokam. O King, whenever the yogi desires to leave this planet of human beings, he should not be perplexed about the proper time or place, but should comfortably sit without being disturbed, and regulating the life here should control the senses by the mind. Text sixteen. Thereafter, the yogi should merge his mind by his unalloyed intelligence into the living entity and, the, and then merge the living entity into the super self. And by doing this, the fully satisfied living entity becomes situated in the supreme stage of satisfaction so that he ceases from all other activities. Text 17. Na yatro kalo nimisham para prabhu kuto na deva chakatam ya ishire na yatra sattvam na rajashtamascha na vai vikaro na mahan pradhanam in that transcendental state of labdho pashanti, there is no supremacy of devastating time, which controls even the celestial demigods who are empowered to rule over mundane creatures and what to speak of the demigods themselves. Nor is there the mode of material goodness, passion or ignorance, nor even the false ego, nor the material causal ocean, nor the material nature. Exciting. Param param vaishnanam atmanti tad yan neti neti yad ushtika vashavaha vishijya doratmyam nananya soryata hydropagu hayaya padam pade pade. The transcendentalists desire to avoid everything godless. For they know that the supreme situation in which everything is related with the Supreme Lord Vishnu. Therefore, a pure devotee who is absolutely harmony with the Lord does not create perplexities, but worships the lotus feet of the Lord at every moment, taking them into his art. Hare Krishna. Oh, Hare forgive Krishna. my mistakes. Hare Thank both. you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, then Pranam, really nice recitation of the chest. Um, <clears throat> thank you so much for the opportunity to talk. Uh, I have no ability, so um, I really appreciate the opportunity and the service given. And, and I sincerely seek your blessings that I'm able to say something which is useful. Um, this is very elevated topics of Srimad Bhagavatam, um, which we are discussing. Again, I have no realizations. I'm trying to repeat what I've heard. So please bless me that I can say something which is um, aligned to the parampara, which is useful. And if there's any mistakes, I do, please, I ask, beg for forgiveness well in advance. Um, so today we are reading um, from Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, Verses 18 and 19. Um, oh, sorry, uh, second canto, second chapter, verses 18 and 19. So um, let's read the two verses and the purport, and then we can we can discuss. So 2.2.18. Param padam 
वैष्णव मनती विसृज्य दौरात्मय मन सौहृद हृदयपगु पदम पर पदे पदे the transcendentalist uh, translation by shila prabhupad the transcendentalist desire to avoid everything godless for they know that supreme situation in which everything is related with the supreme lord vishnu therefore a pure devotee who is in absolute harmony with the lord does not create perplexities but worship the lotus feet of the lord at every moment taking them into his heart but worships the lotus feet of the lord at every moment at every moment taking them into his heart bears the lotus feet in his heart purport by shila prabhupada in the bhagavad gita madham my abode is mentioned several times and according to the version of the supreme personality of godhead shri krishna there exists the unlimited spiritual sky where the planets are called vaikuntas or the abode of the supreme of the personality of godhead in that sky which is far far beyond the material sky and its sevenfold coverings there is no need of the sun or the moon nor is there necessity of electricity for illumination because the planets are self illuminating and more brilliant than the material suns the pure devotees of the lord are absolutely in harmony with the pers- personality of godhead and in other words they always think of the lord as their only dependable friend and well-wisher they do not care for anything for any mundane creature up to the status of brahma the lord of the universe only they can definitely have a clear vision of the vaikuntha planets such pure devotees being perfectly directed by the supreme lord do not create any artificial perplexity in the matter of transcendental understanding by wasting time in discussing what is brahman and what is non brahman or maya nor do they falsely think of themselves as one with the lord or argue that there's no existence of the lord separately or that there is no god at all or that living beings are themselves god or that when god incarnates himself he assumes a material body nor do they concern themselves with many obscure speculative theories which are in actuality so many stumbling blocks on the path of transcendental understanding apart from class of impersonalists or non devotees there are also classes who pose themselves as devotees of the lord but at heart maintain the idea of salvation by becoming one with the impersonal brahma they wrongly manufacture their own way of devotional service by open debauchery and mislead others who are simpletons or debauchees like themselves all these non devotees and debauchees are according to vishnu chakravarti duratmas or crooked souls in the dress of mahatmas or great souls such non devotees and debauchees are completely excluded from the list of transcendentalists by the presentation of this particular verse by sukadev goswami but so the vaikuntha planets are actually the supreme residential places called the parampadam the impersonal brahma jyoti is also called parampadam due to it's being the rays of vaikuntha planets as the sun rays are the rays of the sun in the bhagavad gita 1427 it is clearly said that the impersonal brahma jyoti rests on the person of the lord and because everything rests on brahma jyoti directly and indirectly everything is generated from the lord everything rests on him and after annihilation everything merged in him only therefore nothing is independent of him the pure devotee of the lord no longer wastes valuable time in discriminating the brahman from non brahman because he knows perfectly well that the lord param brahman by his brahman energy is interwoven in everything and thus everything is looked upon by a devotee as a property of the lord 
The devotee tries to engage himself, engage everything in his service and does not create perplexities by falsely lording it over the creation of the Lord. He's so faithful that he engages himself as well as everything else in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. In everything, the devotee sees the Lord and he sees everything in the Lord. The specific disturbance created by a Duratma or crooked soul is due to his maintaining and that the transcendental form of the Lord is something material. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Maybe we'll read the um, verse 19 as well and, and then discuss if that's okay. Um, Itam munis tupar ramed vyavastito vijnana drigvirya surandhita shaya svaparshnina pidya gudam tato nilam anilam staneshu satun Na mejita klama. By uh, translation by Srila Prabhupada, by the strength of scientific knowledge, one should be well situated in absolute realization and thus be able to distinguish all material desires. One should then give up the material body by blocking the air hole through which stool is evacuated with the heel of one's foot and by by foot and by lifting the life air from one place to another in the six primary places, purport by Srila Prabhupada. The many Duratmas who claim to have realized themselves as Brahman and yet are unable to conquer material desires. In Bhagavad Gita, it is clearly explained that the absolutely self-realized soul becomes completely aloof from all material desires. Material desires are based on the false ego of the living being and are exhibited by his childish and useless activities to conquer the laws of material nature and by his desire to lord it over the resources of the five elements. With such a mentality, one is led to believe in the strength of material science, which is with, with its discovery of atomic energy, space travel, by the mechanical vehicles and by such tiny advancements in material science, the false egoist tries to challenge even the strength of the Supreme Lord, which... Um, who can finish all man's tiny endeavors in less than a second? The well-situated self or Brahman realized soul perfectly understand that the Supreme Brahman or the personality of Godhead is all powerful Vasudev, Vasudev and that he, the self-realized living being, is part and parcel of the Supreme Whole. As such, his constitutional position is to cooperate with him in all respects in the transcendental relation of the served and the servitor, such a self-realized soul ceases to exhibit his useless activities of attempting to lord it over the material nature. By being scientifically well informed, he fully engages himself in faithful devotion to the Lord. The expert yogi who has thoroughly practiced the control of life air by the prescribed method of yoga system is advised to quit, quit the body as follows. He should plug up the evacuating hole with the heel of his foot and then progressively move the life air on and on to the six places, the navel, the abdomen, heart, chest, palate, eyebrows, and cerebral pit. Controlling the life air by the prescribed yogic process is mechanical and the practice is more or less physical endeavor for spiritual perfection. In olden days, such practice was very common for the transcendentalists, for the mode of of life and character in those days were favorable. In modern days, when the influence of Kali Yuga is so disturbing, practically practically everyone is trained in this is untrained in this art of bodily exercise. Concentration of mind is more easily attained in these days by chanting the holy name of the Lord. The results are more effective than those derived from the inner exercise of the life air. Srila Prabhupada. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam 
ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಪದ ಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಶ್ರೀ ರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರ ಜಾತ ಸಹಗನ ರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿತ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸಹಗನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ತಾಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದ ವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನು ಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಾಂಶಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೇವಚ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮೀತಿ ನಾಮಿನಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾನಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚತಾರೇಷ ತಾರಿಣಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶಿವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಶ್ರೀ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಅಪರ್ಚುನಿಟಿ ಫಾರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಸಚ್ ಅನ್ ಎಲಿವೇಟೆಡ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಇನ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ ವೆನ್ ಆಸ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಟ್ರೈಂಗ್ ಟು ಫಿಗರ್ ಔಟ್ ಹೌ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಟು understand this the this topic of course ashtanga yoga is very complex complicated um and we are talking about various processes we spoke about virat rupa we are speaking about um uh, you know um the process of leaving the body there will come um other um uh, sections in this chapter which will be more around um how one who has got material desires leaves body or goes to various planets other than uh, you know going back to the lord and us trying to figure out what is the best way to describe and understand this whole thing i was thinking like if if one is planning their journey let's say they are sitting in front of say journey planner um they've got a few things to think about one is what is their destination and we enter the destination right we need to know where we are going um we also need to select how we are going to go we can select we going to walk to the destination we can select we will drive to the destination we can select we can take a flight to the destination so there is there's various options in terms of how we go to the destination right and there are various um, various levels of effort involved in how we go to the destination depending on what we choose and how we choose to go then there is also some other choices involved in in the um uh, you know the um, the way we reach the destination even using the method like we could be taking a a via flight and we could have multiple stops before we want to go to the destination or we could be taking a direct flight and and there are choices around the route itself which we want to um take to reach the destination so how we understand um some some of the concepts in this chapter uh, with that analogy in mind i mean clearly um I, it's all about free will that krishna has given us at least in this context the limited free will around um around around the choices we are making so first is the destination itself of course um in this chapter while you know um 
um, the Lord in the Heart is is the title, and uh, Srila Sukhdev Goswami is looking to establish that Bhakti Yoga is the supreme. Um, he's he's giving all the choices, so the destination could be um, to have the supreme Lord's lotus feet in the heart, which is said in in the Shloka eighteen. There's also mention of. Um, uh, you know, Brahma Jyoti, Paramatma realization. Um, later on, there is mention of um, going to various um, demigod planets. Uh, of course, there's uh, the choice of leaving the destination as the earth planet or go to the lower planets, which are the hellish planets. So first is the destination. Clearly, it establishes um, the various destinations that that we can select. It's also letting us select the various ways we can go there. So um, there's clearly mention of um, of Ashtang Yoga. Uh, we know the whole yoga ladder, right? So there is the Gyan Yoga, the Ashtang Yoga, of course, Bhakti Yoga and Sadhana Bhakti, which um, comes to fruition in, in the final verses, which is of this chapter 36, 37, which is um, how, um, how even Srila Prabhupada explains in the purport how um, Bhakti Yoga is a process. And, and it's, it's explained how different processes, just like walking to a place, has got different effort involved compared to taking a flight. Um, it's it's explained how different processes are different um, uh, to each other. It's explained how um, how much effort it is when you read. Um, I mean, the mechanical process of of holding um, your life air, putting, getting it from um, the the bottom of your body all the way to the chakram and and leave from there mechanically. It is. You need a lot of control and and so much effort. You know, uh, you would um, uh, have heard like the philosophy, the cat philosophy, or the um, uh, or the monkey philosophy. And it is said that we are the hybrid, where you know the monkey has to make. Um, or if you if there was a monkey's child to hold on to the parent, the the child has to make all the effort to hold on to the parent because the parent is jumping. You know how monkeys are jumping from one tree to the other or one house to the other. And the child is just putting in all the effort to hold on. And, and some of these um, jnana yoga like neti neti or ashtang yoga, controlling the life air, are like significant effort. Whereas... Um, and like it's like walking to the destination almost. It may take forever to get there. Whereas, you know, bhakti yoga, which which will uh, come, and it's, some of this is described here, is is more like the flight you take. Of course, there's some effort involved. You need to book it. You need to go to the airport. You need to check in. You need to do that. But it is relatively, it's like the cat philosophy where the, um, the cat holds the kitten by its mouth and takes takes it. So the kitten doesn't have to um, make an effort, as much effort as compared to the um, the child of the monkey. And I think that's, it's quite important. And then also um, it's talking about, I mean, this, this chapter is talking about the, um, the route we are taking. Right? Is it a direct flight? Is it a is it an indirect flight? And how many stops are we taking? Whereas in shlokas um, fifteen to twenty one, which are uh, where it is explained, I think um, satamukti. It is it is more um, uh, akin to um, a direct flight, which is. Um, how, what is the practice and process of leaving of an advanced devotee? And actually, um, if you look at shlokas um, 22 to 32, it's more, um, 
Krama Mukti, which is like, you know, sequential, how you go from here to Indra Lok and the various Loks all the way to Brahma Lok, cross the various um, layers of the material world, go, go up and finally gradually um, get to liberation. And again, it's explained like the process. We are very fortunate in this um, in this age, as well as having um, Srila Prabhupada in our life and and our um, and the various disciples of Srila Prabhupada, that we've got the flight, a direct flight all the way to Golok Vrindavan, which is so unheard of and not easily available in various other yugas, even in this yuga, it's so difficult and we are so fortunate to have um, had this opportunity. So, um, so I think I, I hope that analogy was useful. At least it was useful for me to understand the various contexts. Now, if you come to um, the uh, the current section, um, I think one of the Prabhus I was uh, listening to, um, I think Jeevatha Vaif Prabhu, he, he explained it very well. He said, there are two types of people. There is the yogis and there is the bhogis. Um, the bhogis... They're so attached that when the Yamadutas come, it's like to, um, to you know, take them out. They're so attached to the body. To take them out is a huge task in its own right. And, and the bhogi would ne uh, not easily leave their body. I think he was, he was using a scientific term called rigor mortis. It's when um, um, what happens is if if I do not want to leave my body, I'm really attached. Then when the when I'm asked to leave the body, the muscles become really tight, and I'm just holding on to it. But then I'm just pulled out of the body. Um, whereas yogi is naturally. Um, you know, um, taking a step to to separate the soul from the body. In fact, bhakti yogi is even using the body in the Lord's service, and it's um, um, it's even like um, a much higher state in terms of how they're leaving. So, um, one of the pra prabhus was explaining that, that this is like examination time. So, there's the preparation time, which. Um, which we all do say there is an exam and there is uh, all the preparation that we have done, our sadhana, our chanting, our everything has um, we have done. And now from shloka 15 to 19 um, um, or so, it's like when the examination has arrived. So imagine if we were sitting here and either the Yamadutas or the Vishnu Dutas were to arrive. What are we going to do? And, and it's it's very beautifully explained how and what we should do. So in, in Shloka 15, we heard how we need to focus our, or take um, our senses, right? Um, we should control the senses by the mind. So it's talking, starting with the senses. So we all know our ear is just the socket, um, which has got lots of sounds coming. And are we hearing the sound that we would like to hear, right? So if uh, Prabhu is explaining like the AC is on and, and various um, other things are going on, but we're concentrating on the sound. Likewise, eyes, are they concentrating on the Lord? So how do we, how, uh, and that's the, the external senses versus the internal senses are different because it's using the mind. We have to engage the internal senses in, uh, in you know, focusing all our senses on the Lord. Um, so, so I think that's the first step. Um, get the senses to focus on the Lord um, by, um, by the mind. And then, then he goes on in, in Shloka 17 to explain, um, if I were to read, um, there is no supremacy of devastating time. Um, 
and mode of goodness, passion. So the, there is, um, which controls, nor there is mode of goodness, passion, ignorance, nor even false ego, um, nor the material nature. So then, then it is about, um, um, sorry, I'm slightly missing one. Yeah, sorry, 16. So, so after we have um, uh, got the, um, got the control of the senses and focus is focused on the Lord, thereby the yogi should merge his mind uh, by his unalloyed intelligence. So intelligence comes next. So using the intelligence, merge into the uh, focus on the living entity, our soul, and how the soul is serving the super soul. Um, Prabhupada translates it as super soul. So I think that's the next step, which is how how then we focus on how we are serving um, the super soul. And then it says how that allows us to get over the three modes of material nature and, um, and um, control, um, uh, you know, and, and be uh, not, uh, be transcendental to the material nature. And then Shloka 18, he says, and this this is, uh, I mean, today's shloka, which is very beautiful. He says, um, and then then he goes to the soul and the desire. So so the transcendentalists desire to avoid anything godless. So the word uh, the the Sanskrit that is used is atad. Um, uh, I'm just trying to find it. Um, yeah, neti atad. Um, so like like it is, you know, om tat sat tat uh, stands for the Lord. So anything which is not associated with the Lord, um, the desire is to avoid them and focus focus the heart completely on the lotus feet of the Lord. So it says, but worships the lotus feet of the Lord at every moment. And in that mode, um, once, um, and then it says, by the strength, of, one should be well situated in absolute realization and thus able to extinguish all material desires and then, then give up the body. And then it also explains Ashtang Yoga, which is obviously another process. So it's, it's explained like, um, um there is there's a book called Salt Bread, which is where some of the devotees, some of the disciples of Srila Prabhupada who went through extreme austerity um in in the Iron Curtain regions. And and when the Prabhu was explaining that um uh, this this particular Prabhu had gone through extreme austerity. He was um, he was he was being uh, tortured so much that they had even broken his backbone. But as he was leaving, he's uh, leaving his body. He sat down in Padmasan, and he was very calm and cool. And he followed the process of withdrawing his senses and focusing on the Lord. And very very. Um, you know, simply left his body. It's also explained how Ayendra Prabhu, as he was leaving his body, in that case, he he bowed down. He had his 1,500 shaligrams with him. He bowed down to the Lord and left his body very, very peacefully like a yogi would rather than a bogey would. And it's a, it's amazing example how, um, you know, devotees have, um, um, you know, very, very peacefully left the body, we, we have our own example of Shruti Dharma Prabhu, how uh, the Ram Shila went to him. He was completely peaceful. So was Hari Vamsha Prabhu. I remember going to see him and, uh, and so many exalted devotees who have left the world in a, such a peaceful, um, peaceful state. Um, Prabhupada also talks about having um, extinguished or having no material desires. We know even like in Bhakti Yoga, the whole concept of Anya Bhilashita Shunyam, the, uh, the importance of having no material desires. And it's very hard um, to have no Mishra of material desires to be um, achieved. 
um, one of the lectures I was hearing and uh, Prabhu was explaining um, uh, using an analogy about the material desires, which, which I found very fascinating. He said, how a monkey is captured by, by a hunter or um, by, by the people who do circus and other things. He was explaining. Does anyone know on the, um, on the call how, how they capture the monkeys? Anyone wants to unmute and talk about it? Okay, I'll I'll then. So they they have a little little bottle in which they put a banana, and essentially you can the monkey can put the hand inside, but once the monkey holds the banana, the monkey cannot pull his hand out. And, and if the monkey were to leave the banana, he can easily pull his hand up. And, and it's explained how the hunter would then come and easily capture the monkey because the monkey would, would be so attached to the banana that he is um, he's literally losing his life um, and not just being focused on that material desire. And I think that's how we explain this our life, where we are so attached to the material desire and holding on to it that, you know, we're missing the bigger picture. He gave another example where you're saying um, how in India, when you're going for Mangal Arti or early in the morning and you're going in the car, a lot of street dogs would come and start to follow you and they'll bark at you and they'll, they will run behind the car. And, and even if they touch the car, they're not going to get anything. We are like those street dogs trying to run after something where we'll not get anything and the car will go away. But but we're still going after those um, material desires, and he is explaining how how important it, it is for us to um, you know focus our efforts and dovetail our activities in the service of the Lord. And I think that's the one big difference between bhakti yoga and other forms of yoga. As I was explaining, ashtanga yoga is is to separate out the soul from the body through you know, all these um, various activities, um, yogic activities, which is not prescribed for this age of Kali Yuga in any case. Whereas Bhakti Yoga is to use everything we have in Krishna's service and Krishna still accepts it. And Prabhupada has said that, um, I think one of the Prabhupada disciples asked him, Prabhupada, it says in various places in the scriptures that anya bila shita shunya, your material desires have to be shunya at zero um, before, you know, like you are, you become pure and you're eligible to go to the spiritual world. How how will that happen? Because we are so fallen in this Kali Yuga and, and the place where we are that we are not, um, you know, it'll be so hard for us and Prabhupada said, don't worry, I, I have the back door where I'll hold you by a shikha and take you um, to, to the Lord's, um, um, uh, you know, board. And I think that's the only hope, at least my only hope, that somehow through mercy um, um, we are able to um, do that. In in the in the purport uh, for... Um, uh, Shloka 19, Prabhupada also talks about how some of the material advancements are, um, or the scientific advancements that we're looking to do, trying to challenge the um, strength of the Supreme Lord are, um, are kind of uh, such tiny endeavors. So we may think that we have achieved something, but essentially there are such foolish endeavors that if Supreme Personality of God, if if uh, if uh, um, if Krishna wants, he he can finish it within second, within one second. He says, um, um, one of the Prabhus was explaining, um, um, using a story. He said once a yogi was sitting. And um, um, and he was in dhyan when a mouse 
you would have heard the story of Musha. But the mouse comes to him and says, oh, please protect me. Please protect me, Yogi. And um, and he says, um, Yogi says, um, um, what happened? He says, well, the cat is after me. Please protect me. Please make me the cat. So he says, Tathastu, and makes him the cat. And then after some time, uh, the cat comes to him and says, well, please protect me, please protect me. The dog is after me. Please make me a dog. So the yogi says the task to him. And so after some time, the dog comes to him and says, please protect me, protect me. Um, uh, the tiger is after me. Uh, please make me the tiger. He makes him the tiger. And then tiger tries to... Um, when he sees yeah. the yogi, he thinks, oh, I can have a very good meal. And he was trying to attack him when the yogi says, oh, become a mouse. So um, we should never underestimate that all the abilities, everything that we've got is from the Lord. And whatever scientific progress and everything that we are making is um, uh, by the abilities provided by the Lord. And Prabhupada is saying, if he wants, he can just finish it and make us a mushak. A, a, any second. Um, also, I think the whole process of Ashtang Yoga, I'll not go into any detail, but um, but we know like there are there is various um, various life heirs, the soul, the um, soul is bound by them. The Ashtang Yogis go all the way from bottom up to the top and leave from the top. Um, as we saw, um, I mean, tomorrow is Shankranti, right? Um, it's uh, when um, the um, northern journey of the sun starts. I think it's it's called, is it um, Sol uh, Solistis, whatever. Ba basically, the um, Uttarayan period starts um, from tomorrow. And Bhishma, we know the story of Lord uh, Bhishma Bidama where he waited both the Ryan to leave his body. But it's also said here, it doesn't matter, right? We, we heard in Shloka 15 that for a devotee, you know, I'll just go and read that. Um, this is 15. He should not be perplexed by proper time or place. Um, so, uh, so it doesn't matter um, in terms of when, where, what process we just have to chant the holy name and um and that will um uh, you know be the ultimate success in our life i'll probably stop there um thank you so much please forgive um my shortcomings and um um and you know um any mistakes i have made if there are any comments anyone has Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you very much for the wonderful class. My humble obeisances on to you. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. I really like your classes. You, you say it so nicely and softly. It's very melodious when you're speaking. So it's very, you know, I pay a lot of attention because I like the way you speak with a lot of softness and uh, lots of stories and make us understand very nicely. I really like the class. I was just thinking, you know, Prabhupada, when we, uh, we are reading uh, Lilamrita in uh, uh, our Bhakti Vriksha group, and so uh, we are uh, going through all the difficulties that Prabhupada had, you know, why nobody was there to help him. He had no money, but he was continuing to translate. He was continuing to distribute his uh, uh, books uh, in India. Then he went to America. We are still in the part where he was in India. So all the struggles he was going through. And uh, I was just thinking like, you know, sometimes uh, as uh, aspiring to be a devotee, aspiring to be devotees, uh, sometimes we think, oh, dev the devotee path is very easy. Every other path, every other ashtanga, you know, everything is very difficult, but the devo devotee one is very easy because we just to live our life and uh, you know, worship, you know, do, do our sadhana bhakti and utilize everything in Krishna service. But as you're saying that, you know, we also have material desires, we are, have attachments and all that. But we sometimes uh, start thinking like, oh, I'm a devotee, so I don't have to go through many difficulties. I'll just <laughs> go on easily. So I was just thinking, you know, the pure devotees like Prabhupada, they, uh, like yesterday, uh, no, day before yesterday, Vrindavan Chandra Prabhu's class, we were discussing what is 
how how do devotees merge into krishna so devotees don't think of merging into krishna devotee uh, devotees uh, uh, devotee goes um, a devotee um, considers krishna's desires as supreme so they fulfill krishna's desire in that way the devotee uh, becomes one with krishna in desire in fulfilling krishna's desire so like prabhupad pure devotees they would not like we would think oh uh, if i can you know this life i can go back to krishna like that uh, and then you know that there there will be no trouble or no trouble no birth death old age and disease but pure devotees would think anything anywhere you send me in the whole planetary systems wherever i would preach i will distribute books i will preach so shri laprabhupad came from the spiritual world and went to, through so much of hardships just to give us this knowledge so you know pure devotees when they, they leave peacefully i was just thinking and then whatever krishna uh, uh, gives them the duties you know go here there wherever and preach they would do that even they are not thinking like oh when i go back to krishna yeah i will be free of all troubles so i was thinking like yeah. that when you... <laughs> yeah. so so nice thank you so much mataji for sharing first thank you for encouraging and uh, such such beautiful thing uh, even i um uh, reflect quite a lot on what shila prabhupad went through even i mean in lilamrita when you go further up and he was in the us things were not easy I mean, you didn't have, even have rent to pay. Can you imagine? Like you were in a different country. You have no source of income. You have no place. And then he was bored. He was still moving from a small place to a bigger place. And he was renting and he was finding out ways as to how. And he was depending. And I, I, I think that's, one, I mean, it was amazing. Um, but I, I think that there is a difference between if... a common person a non devotee would be going through the same um you know troubles and struggles how they will be feeling versus how a devotee feels as they go through the struggles um i i think because a lot of the struggles a lot of pain a lot of things are in the mind uh, and and a devotee is is just doing their best for krishna in whatever situation and whatever capabilities and whatever ability that they have got uh, if it is success or failure or whatever they are doing they are doing it for krishna so they are not uh, because they are not so attached to um you know like um and and because they are so dependent on krishna they are not feeling the same struggle even though they are working hard for krishna they don't want to leave any stone unturned for krishna but they are they are on it so if if we look at the story of prahlad maharaj like shila prabhupad i mean he went through even at a young age so much tormentation but he was always peaceful because he was remembering krishna he was depending on the lord and because devotees are so dependent on the lord in going through their struggles and not um um yeah uh, they 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 have a very different experience even though an outsider may see oh it's so much struggle and so much um you know suffering but are they really going through the same suffering that a materialist will go through who will who who will feel the ups and downs of life a lot more than a devotee would but but really nice points mataji anyone Thank else you. it's it's like they are undisturbed isn't it devotees yeah. are undisturbed in any situation that's right shito shna sukha dukha cha exactly thank you anyone hare else krishna. hare krishna hare Mahasana. krishna shri prabhu the prabhu please accept my humble obeisances as our gracious shri prabhu pad yeah you get very nice simple way to understand also i like all your analogy It wasn't sort of we had to put our brain into to understand the you know the uh, analogy it was very simple like the way you did you know the, the monkeys and the and the cats in the mouth of mother how how i mean if it is anything else they feel you know this cat is kind of holding me you know but but they feel so comfortable they feel so comfortable because his mother's love is there so i think this to the bhakti yoga though i mean there is austerity definitely 
I mean, we we all know that you know where to become a devotee. We have to, you know, do the all the regulated principles. And uh, at the beginning, it it seems uh, hard, but you know, if we if we, if we kind of carry on with this uh, devotional service, it it automatically purify our heart, and then you feel reciprocation from Krishna, and yeah. more actually. You feel more Krishna giving you more than what you are putting. You know that that's the only thing about bhakti yoga. He gives you so much. You know you feel so um, enlightened when you do a service for Krishna. You automatically feel so peaceful. You know, so that's why bhakti yoga is. You don't have to go to that very hardship like Ashtanga yogi. You know, they, they go through a lot. I mean, they, they it's not it's not easy to be a Shanga Yogi, you know, very, very hard. But also devotees journey also very hard. It's not but you feel um instantly reciprocation from Krishna. Definitely. I mean, I have seen some experience, I mean of some people gone through. It's really wonderful. Bhakti Yoga is just the best way. That's why Srila Prabhupada, Krishna himself. Bhakta, you know, because you are my devotee, I'm speaking you this Bhagavad Gita. No, he didn't say he was an Ashtanga yogi. He wasn't something else. Why? Because he is a devotee. That's yeah. why he gave him the Bhagavad Gita knowledge. It is so wonderful. That's what. That's why Srila Prabhupada is helping us to be a you know, Bhakti yogi. It is such a such a wonderful. We never knew all this until Srila Prabhupada gave us all this wonderful knowledge for us to you know, to to practice this bhakti yoga. It's yeah. a wonderful, I mean, the whole Bhagavatam is just so wonderful. So wonderful. Oh, nice, so nice. Palika yeah. Mataji ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Yes, Mataji, I mean, um, as it is said, you know, in, um, during the month of Kartik, we say two fingers short. One is our endeavor and one is mercy. And we are so, so fortunate that the mercy flows through the Guru Parampara to all of us where there's reciprocation. Of course, there are times when we are doing it out of duty, um, even if we don't want to, like, oh, I've got rounds to chant and they're left and, oh, I need to do this because I need to do this. But, um, but you know, when we do it with our heart and at least try to do it and keep doing it, there is progression, the mercy, everything comes. And we get so much more, like Krishna promises, that we take one step towards him, he will take 10 steps towards us. And we are all very fortunate to be in the association of the devotees and have, you know, Srila Prabhupada and his disciples in our life who have given us so much Um also, I hear listening is very, very important. You know, more we listen, it it purifies the heart, especially from Srila Prabhupada. I mean, I know Guru Maharaj and all the other elevated sannyasis, devotees. But Srila Prabhupada, because he's the most pure devotee, if we hear Srila Prabhupada regularly, you can, you, can, you can feel that your heart is changing. You can feel some peace. You can feel, you can feel you've got something, you know? Yes, so it's it's very important to hear Srila Prabhupada every day. That's what it's I hear. Blessings, Mataji, that I am able to hear Srila Prabhupada more often than I do. But thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Anyone else? If not, thank you so much. Vanchi Kalpatru. Yes, Chakrapa Sindhu Dev Chapati Tanam Pavani Vaishnavi Pyu Namanama. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, everyone. Thank Very you so nice. much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna.